Yo, what's up, Swag Gang? You already know what time it is, man. It's your boy, KLR, aka KL Swag. Back here with a video, man. Look, man, we about to react to the 10 NFL trades that should have happened, but didn't. Hey, man, make sure you comment, like, subscribe, and let's just get into the reaction. I almost stuttered. I, 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 I almost stuttered. Damn. Come on, man. Let's just get into the reaction. Congrats, Gretzky. Gretzky. That rule Back applies here, in hockey. And it definitely applies to the NFL, NFL trade market. market. Hey! What's up, everyone? Before we start, we just want to let you know about our awesome Get uh -huh. Contest. All you need to do, if you didn't have notifications on, then all you need to do is like and comment, and you'll be automatically entered into the random draw. Only to fall through in the final moments for various reasons. In fact, we did a list on it before. Well, Sir. this time, we're changing things up a bit. As we look at some deals that weren't exactly close to happening, but looking oh. back, they totally should have. Here are 10 trades that should have happened, but didn't. A big shout out yeah. to Dogboy1642 for suggesting this video. Now, to the list. Number 10, Earl Thomas to the Kansas City Chiefs. Before the 2018 Ooh. season, then Seattle Seahawks all pro safety Earl Thomas demanded one of two things, a new contract or a trade. Yeah. Bro, his shit on it, bro. Yeah, Lizzo. Four years later in my Damn, ass. Damn, man. Bro, I'm not gonna lie though, bro. Every time she went to the Chiefs, that would have been fire. Been seeing how they live, so they ain't have to. This would be my new favorite team. The Dallas though. Cowboys and Kansas City Chiefs were reportedly interested in a future Hall of yeah, Famer, as both Cowboys. had major voids to fill in the secondary. The Seahawks refused to give in to either of his demands, and Thomas ultimately ended his holdout before the start of the year, and suffered a season-ending leg fracture in Week 4 against the Arizona Cardinals. That yeah. would turn out to be his final game as a Seahawk. As many remember, a disgruntled Thomas flipped off the Seattle sideline as he's being carted off, obviously unhappy about not getting the new contract. Hindsight is 2020, but looking back, the Chiefs really should have been Thomas. Thomas really like that, Their bro. defense was awful in 2018. He was Placing disgusting. Placing 24th in scoring and 31st in yards allowed. Not to mention, KC's defense also cost them the AFC title game that year against the New England Patriots, allowing Tom Brady and Co. to score on three of their final four drives, including the game-winning touchdown in overtime. Ooh. What a way to waste Patrick Mahomes' MVP season. Yeah, everything worked out in the end. KC signed pro bowler Tyron Matthew in 2019 free agency, and he helped them win Super Bowl 54. But if mm. they actually went out and acquired Thomas, who knows? Maybe it would have been back to back Super Bowl titles. Number nine. Tony well, Romo Thomas to the Denver Hill, Broncos. Yeah. Romo suffered a fractured L1 vertebrae during a 2016 preseason game against the Seattle Seahawks. That gave the Dallas Cowboys no choice but to start rookie Dak Prescott, the 135th overall draft selection for Damn, that year. Bro. We all know how that played out. Prescott and fellow yeah. rookie Ezekiel Elliott powered the Dallas offense, leading America's team to a 13-3 record and the top seed in the NFC. The that Cowboys stupid, were eliminated bro. by the Green Bay Packers in the divisional round, but the good news was Jerry Jones had found himself a new franchise quarterback to build around, <laughs> which made Romo expendable. <laughs> For whatever million, reason, bro. several QB needy teams balked at the opportunity to acquire Romo, and he decided to retire and join the CBS broadcasting Damn. group. Looking back, it's beyond. Damn. Beyond us why the Denver Broncos didn't make a play for Romo. After winning Super Bowl 50, they should have the playoffs in 2016 due to frustrating quarterback play from Trevor Simeon and Paxton Lynch. Romo would have been the perfect addition to a Denver team that was still in win now mode, with an elite defense and wide receivers Demarius Thomas and Emmanuel Sanders still dominating. Fast forward mm. to 2021, and Elway is still searching for a long term answer at quarterback. Yeah. Number eight, Tony Gonzalez to the Green Bay Packers. The greatest tight end of all time only saw three playoff appearances and zero playoff wins during his 12 year tenure with the Kansas City Chiefs. After they missed the playoffs in 2008, Casey did the right thing and chopped the future Hall of Fame to a contender. Gonzalez ah! was traded to the Atlanta Falcons in the 2009 offseason, and though he performed very well with Matt Ryan, it was more of the same with his new team. The Falcons, like the Chiefs, continuously underperformed in the postseason with Gonzalez. They ah! won their 2012 NFC Divisional Round game against the Seattle Seahawks, but 
that was it. He retired after the 2013 season with no Super Bowl rings and just one career playoff victory. Looking Damn. back, it would have been nice if the Packers had traded for Gonzalez, specifically in Bro. 2008 or 2009 when the Aaron Rodgers era began. Following Brett Favre's departure, Rodgers has never really used his... Who y'all got? Tony Gonzalez, Gronkowski, or Kettle? Let me know down below in the comments. Make sure you comment and subscribe if you're watching this video. Tight ends much, but Gonzalez could have been an exception. Imagine Rodgers with Gonzalez, oh. Jordy Nelson, Greg Jennings, and Randall Cobb. Damn. TG would have got his I ring hate. after Green Bay won Super Bowl 45 in 2010. Man, he could have helped A-Rod in his bid for a second championship as well. Number seven. Patrick Peterson to the New Orleans Saints. Ooh, During a fired. frustrating 2018 season, Arizona Cardinals superstar quarterback Patrick Peterson requested a trade. The team had a horrible yeah, man, one six Lattimore. record, and oh Peterson God. understandably wanted a fresh start. He later walked back, back on the demands, on released a statement, and stuck with the team. Looking, Looking back, back, however, on. it was a missed opportunity for both sides. And Peterson was hit with a six-game suspension over a PED violation in 2019. He looked nothing like a pro bowler that year, or Ooh. in 2020 for that matter. Peterson regressed quickly, and Arizona lost out on a chance to accumulate valuable draft capital for him. The New Orleans Saints would have been the perfect fit for Peterson in 2018. Despite a 13-3 record, they had the NFL's fourth worst passing defense. Peterson Damn. and Marshawn Lattimore would have formed a scary good quarterback duo. And maybe Peterson That's helps I, the Saints get past the loss. That's why I just said, bro. That would be a scary-ass duo, bro. Marshawn Lattimore in... Patrick Peterson? Oh my god! Los Angeles Rams in that infamous 2018 NFC Championship game. You know, the Nola no call game. A Peterson to New Orleans trade oh, could really have changed damn. the NFL landscape. It's crazy because he's been playing the league Number for like forever. Eli Manning to the Jacksonville Jaguars. Good. The New York Giants wasted Eli Manning's final three seasons. And the Jacksonville Jaguars wasted their short Super Bowl window by committing to Blake Bortles. After the Hell Giants yeah. benched Eli in favor of Geno Smith during the 2017 season, they probably should have traded him. And Manning's former coach, Tom Cullen. Damn, so they could have traded Eli. Grammarly can help. This sentence when Jacksonville was going stupid correct. that one year. He won't have beat. Bro, they won't have beat. Should have made a play for him. Manny and Coughlin won two Super Bowls together. The latter joined the Jaguars in 2017 to take over as the executive vice president of football operations. Jacksonville won the AFC South and reached the AFC title game, narrowly yeah. falling to the New England Patriots. Manning, a two-time Super Bowl MVP and all, could have been the final piece to help the Jaguars break through in 2018. Oh, bro, but the Jaguars instead gave Bortles a three-year extension. He unraveled Even though Eli Manning is better than Blake. The starting job. The Jaguars finished last in the AFC South, while the Giants held on to Manning until his retirement in 2020. As it turns out, <laughs> this was a huge opportunity that the Giants missed to get draft picks for Manning, and a massive blown Damn. chance by the Jaguars to get a Super Bowl winning QB to complement their elite defense. Number five. <laughs> Randy Moss to the Green Bay Packers. Superstar wide receiver Randy Moss endured a frustrating two-year tenure with the Oakland Raiders from 2005 to 2006. In the 2007 offseason, the Raiders shopped the All-Pro wideout, and the Green Bay Packers were reported to have interest in the man that terrorized them during his time with the Minnesota Vikings. Of course, Moss wound up getting traded to the New England Patriots. He enjoyed a career revival and recorded a single-season record 23 yes. touchdown receptions, leading the Bats to a perfect regular season. They went all the way to Super Bowl 42 and lost to the Giants. So Moss obviously has no regrets with the trade to New England. But the Packers really should have made that move for Moss in 2007. Their best receiver that year was a 32-year-old Donald Driver with 1,048 yards. Oh yeah. Roman Moss with Driver and Greg Jennings and you'd have quite the three-headed monster at receiver. With Moss, the no. Packers very likely get past the Giants in that crushing overtime loss in the NFC Championship game. Maybe Favre goes on to win one last Super Bowl with Green Bay, and maybe he decides to keep playing after that. Or, you know, Moss and Aaron Rodgers could have done magic together for a few years. Either way, mm. the Packers blew it by never finishing the deal for Moss. Number four, Darrell Rivas to the San Francisco 49ers. Unable to Whoa. reach an agreement on a new deal, the New York Jets shopped their all-pro quarterback in the 2013 offseason. The defending NFC champion San Francisco 49ers reportedly had interest, but he wound up getting traded to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers years ahead Ooh. of the draft. The Bucks then signed Rivas to a six-year, $96 million contract. He struggled in their defensive system and was released after one year. The oh 49ers didn't God. 
didn't exactly need this reboots for these three. Reasons. a defense led by Patrick Willis, Navarro Bowman, Justin Smith, and Aldon Smith. But with the benefit of hindsight, we say they should have done this deal. Yes, San Fran had the NFL's seventh best passing defense in 2013, and they Damn. allowed the third fewest points. Now, just imagine if they had Revis. Maybe his elite coverage skills helped San Fran get past Seattle in that heartbreaking 2013 NFC Championship Hell loss. Yeah, he would. And maybe his presence helped San Fran avoid a late season collapse in 2014. Add it all up, and this is definitely a trade that would have made sense for both sides. Number three, Barry Sanders to the San Francisco 49ers. Detroit Lions icon Barry Sanders was the NFL's most explosive running back in the 1990s. The 10-time Pro Bowler and 1997 co-MVP was remarkably loyal to a team that never built a contender around him. The mm. Lions only made the playoffs five times in Sanders' Hall of Fame career, Damn, only five, huh? just a single postseason win. Because this is merely a hypothetical exercise, we look back and wish for Sanders' sake the 49ers made a play for him. From 1993 to 1996, the 49ers didn't have a single thousand yard rusher to complement Steve Young, Jerry Rice, God and their damn, passing I attack. I got the 49ers yards. somehow managed just the one Super Bowl title with Young as the starter, whereas the arch rival Dallas Cowboys won three in the 90s. The key difference? Dallas had Emmitt Smith to complement Troy Aikman and Michael Irvin. Imagine if the 49ers traded for Sanders somewhere in that 1993 to 96 time frame. Or mm. even if they traded for Sanders before his shocking retirement in 1999. Maybe he keeps that Super Bowl window open during the Niners post Steve Young era in the early 2000s. Mm. One way or another, it would have been nice to see Sanders compete for multiple championships on a 49ers team that needed Damn, a game Gary, they messed you up, bro. Number two. Joe Montana to the Arizona Cardinals. Oh. Steve Young asserted himself as the 49ers starter while Joe Montana was sidelined in 1991 and 1992. That Ooh. made the four-time Super Bowl champion expendable. The Cardinals emerged as a frontrunner for his services during the 1993 offseason. However, Montana reportedly turned down a three-year, $15 million offer from them. He was eventually traded to the Chiefs, and he signed a three-year deal worth $10 million, wow. which was considerably less than Arizona's offer. You're now, stupid. Montana fared nicely in his two seasons with KC, stupid. taking them to the playoffs both times, including all the way to the 1993 stupid. AFC Championship game. But looking back, it's hard not to wonder what could have been if he joined the Cardinals. He would have had a thousand yard rusher and Ronald Moore and two stud wideouts and Ricky Prowell and Gary Clark. The 1993 Cardinals also finished seventh in scoring defense. They went seven and nine that year. But Montana could have easily given them at least three more wins. In 1994, Arizona went that. eight and eight. Again, Montana Damn, eight eight. made that much better. The Cardinals have been one of the NFL's saddest franchise for more than seven decades now. Not saying that Montana would have won them a Super Bowl, but he could have really put them on the map before the end of his career. Number one. Brett Favre to the oh, Dallas Cowboys. Back on a 2017 Doomsday podcast episode, ESPN reporter Ed Werder recalled a golfing day with Tony Romo. There, Romo told Werder that the Cowboys wanted to acquire Favre while Bill Parcells was the head coach. Werder told mm. Romo he heard that as well. Yeah, you talked about uh, during the round about how um, the Cowboys had had an interest in trading for Favre late oh. in his career when he was available. Parcells was the coach. Yeah. And... Uh, and I said, oh, yeah, I kind of kind of heard that. And he said, well, you know, what the, it, the the deal went dead when the Packers asked for me to be in the trade. Oh. And I'm like, oh, really? The Cowboys didn't trade for Favre because they didn't want to give you up. Favre even admitted himself that he dreamed of playing for the Cowboys. Oh, he did. Yeah, I'm had your love keeps lifting me higher. <laughs> I wanted I to be the Dallas Cowboys Cowboy quarterback. quarterback when I was when a little, little kid. kid my, my, my favorite, favorite player, player was still my favorite, favorite player of all time, was Roger Stallback. And, <gasps> you know, it got, got to meet Roger Stallback. I'd like to call him a, uh, I think it's okay to say a good friend. 
Oh. Uh, and I, you know, I still get goosebumps when I talk to him. Well, Dallas should have done it during Parcells' tenure as head coach, which spanned from 2003 to 2006. More specifically, 2005 or 2006 would have made sense, since the Packers missed the playoffs in those two years. Favre could have played with 1,000-yard wideouts Terrell Owens, Terry Glenns, and Jason Witten, not to mention a stacked defensive line. The Cowboys underachieved despite so much Pro Bowl talent from 2006 to 2010, only winning one playoff game in that span. You have to think Favre would have fared much better than Romo, who infamously choked in the big games. Maybe Favre would have brought another Super Bowl or two to Dallas Maybe. before the end of his Maybe. career. Coulda, shoulda, woulda. Instead, Favre played for the New York Jets and Minnesota Vikings Ugh. before retiring after the 2010 season. But hey, what other NFL trades should have happened but didn't? Join us in the comment section below if you like this video and I ain't gonna lie, Brad Favre was that double. Anyways, man, make sure you comment, subscribe. I love you guys. Roll the 10K. I'll see you guys in the next